In this question part we have to show that k is equal to e plus e squared over 4. Let's go back to the information that is given earlier in the question that says that the two graphs have a common tangent when x is 3. Now this information also implicitly tells us that the two graphs intersect when x is 3. This in turn means that f3 is equal to g3. Let's substitute based on the equations given for fx and gx. So for f3 we get negative 3 minus h, and here we'll take the value of h from the previous question part, so e plus 6 over 2, and this is squared, plus we have 2k. On the right hand side, for g3 we get e to the power of 3 minus 2 plus k. In our next step, let's square 3 minus e plus 6 over 2. So we get negative, the square of 3 is 9, then we get 2 times the product of the two terms, and since one of the terms is positive and the other one is negative, we get negative 2 times 3 times e plus 6 over 2. Then we get the square of e plus 6 over 2, and e plus 6 squared is e squared plus 12e plus 36, and 2 squared is 4. We can subtract k from both sides of the equation, so here we get plus k, and this is equal to e to the power of 1, or simply e. Before moving on, we'll multiply 2 times 3 times e plus 6, and since 2 times 3 is 6, we get 6e plus 36. To collect terms inside the bracket, I'll find a common denominator, which is 4. Therefore we get 36 over 4 for 9, minus 12e plus 72 over 4, plus e squared plus 12e plus 36 over 4. We still have plus k here and e on the right hand side. Now we are ready to collect terms inside the bracket. We have 36 plus 36 and minus 72, so these cancel each other out, and we also have negative 12e and plus 12e, which will also cancel. So inside the bracket we are just left with e squared over 4, and taking into account the negative sign in front of the brackets, we get that negative e squared over 4 plus k is equal to e. From here, k is e plus e squared over 4, and this is what we wanted to show. Let's see a tip that might help you succeed on similar questions. Here, the IB is nice enough to give you the final answer. As you have seen, lots of algebra is involved in this question, so it is easy to make a mistake in your working. If after solving the question you don't get to the answer that IB gives you, go back to check your working because you made a mistake along the way. It might sound funny, but sometimes students assume that the answer given in the question is incorrect and that the result they got is the correct one. Even though this is not impossible, it is very unlikely that an answer provided by the IB is incorrect.